Nerd Ventures! I'm on my way. What's up, everybody? Welcome to your Monday stream. On my way to Nerd Ventures Tower. Oh man, it's gonna be a good day. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the trailer that pretty much broke the internet. I'm pretty sure it's the only thing people are talking about, thinking about. I've watched the trailer, I don't know, man. I don't even know how many times. I went to bed thinking about the trailer. I woke up thinking about the trailer. Trailer, trailer, trailer. Multiverse, Madness, Strange, Doctor Wanda. That's where we're at. That's where we're mentally at today. That's that's what's going on. So so buckle up and get your butthole ready. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that was on my. I, I have a teleprompter inside the, the 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 helmet, and I don't know what Chet was thinking. I I apologize. We're also going to talk a little bit about Lord of the Rings, Moon Knight, and. A serious lack of Kenobi. I'm pulling into the tower right now. I'll see you in a second. Woo. All right, let's get this going. Let's get started here, ladies and gentle beings. Very excited to be doing this Monday stream, especially after just such an epic uh, big game trailer. And uh, shout out to everybody that stopped by yesterday for the Super Bowl stream. I really appreciated it. I had a good time. Let me try to change this stupid thing because we're still having issues here. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. We'll just be trying to figure that out as we go along this week. Okay, so shout out to everybody that was on the Super Bowl stream yesterday. Had a blast. Ate some really spicy wings with you guys. Uh, broke down the trailer. Had a lot of fun in general. Just super fun uh, stream. I thought it was a really good game as well. Um, you know, shout out to the Rams. Shout out to Stafford. And... Uh, yeah, I think uh, Cincinnati and Joe still has a long, uh, illustrious career ahead of him. So, uh, yeah, that's all gravy, baby. I also want to say a couple of things going on today. It is, of course, Valentine's Day. And I want to dedicate this stream and honestly just all the content over here uh, to my Valentine that I think everybody knows and everybody knows where this is headed but I just want to say shout out to my Valentine Paul from Heavy Spoilers because I get to steal all of the good info that he puts into his videos and treat it as my own in today's stream and the rest of the content no I'm just kidding obviously uh happy Valentine's Day to Elisa my fiance uh, incredible human being. I actually met her through this channel. So just another blessing on top of blessings on top of blessings uh, when it comes to this channel and this brand and this whole crazy thing that we're doing with the Nerdvengers. So um, I absolutely love Elisa. I think many of you guys love Elisa and, uh, you know, just happy Valentine's Day, baby. I know you're watching. And I also know I didn't get you anything. And so uh, this is going to sub substitute for that I, I hope <laughs> anyway okay uh but you know what else is really cute you know what else is really cute about valentine's day there are there's a lot of love out there in the world in the nerdy world you know things like that and i think that uh when it when it comes to love you know, I, I think we almost recognize that currently in our world, one of the 
just m- most beautiful things. One of, one of the things that, when it comes to love, it's like, whoa. Now that's what I'm talking about. When it when it comes to love. Is Luke Soka, of course. Luke Soka. Now, look, let me explain something to you guys. I don't think I did a good enough job explaining this, okay? These shirts are real. Okay? Some of you guys were like, wait, what? The shirts were real? Yeah, motherfucker, the shirts were real. And not only are the shirts real, we went way too ham on these shirts. Okay? So I'm technically way in the hole. Okay? We printed about, I don't know, a million of them about. And so, it, unless you want me to go dead ass broke, uh, we might have, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's real bad. Unless you guys actually fucking buy some of these Luke Soka shirts, I mean, what am I going to do with all these Luke Soka shirts? Okay? I, I may have. Guys, I may have really fucked this up. You know? Like, I. Like, go to thedenofnerdsmerch.com and buy a, go- buy a gosh dang Luke Soka shirt. Buy a couple Luke Soka shirts. Buy a- all of them, please. Because we're... Because at this point... I I may have made a bad gamble on Luke Soka. I may have bet the farm <coughs> on, on Luke Soka. <coughs> so, uh... Get on over there and... And check it out. It's it's good times. It's good times out there. Okay. Now, allow me to get set up uh, for today's stream because we certainly have to look at this Doctor Strange trailer. I got to get this pulled up. And man, oh man. What a blast of a trailer. What a blast of a trailer. I felt like... This is a strange trailer in a couple of different respects. I think the biggest thing, frankly, out there about uh, when it comes to this trailer is that they they put, <clears throat> in my opinion, one of the big, big teases, Patrick Stewart, kind of right front and center, um, which is really cool. By the way, 21 million views overnight. How many of those were... YouTubers looking for Easter eggs, you know what I mean? But for real, for real, that's impressive. 21 million in one evening? Good God, man. That tra- and this trailer's going to do, this, this trailer's going to do uh, Buku numbers. But let's frame this a little bit before we get into the trailer. And I actually want to do, I, I want to do a couple of things. Do we ship to Canada? I think we do. We're going to have to ask... Brian, if you're in here, do we ship to Canada? Do we ship to Canada? Help me out. Help me out, do we? Okay, so let's talk briefly about Multiverse of Madness before we even get into the trailer. We need to frame some stuff. And I do want to make a statement later in the stream, if you guys can remind me, I want to make a statement about Book of Boba Fett, and I want to make a statement about... The Lord of the Rings show. I want to like talk about that, but let's let's just get into Multiverse of Madness here. There's weird stuff going on in this trailer because Multiverse of Madness has been a movie that's been in development for a long, long time. It was always a massive deal for Marvel Studios, but I think it became an even bigger deal at around the time when Scott Derrickson walked away. Okay, so we're going all the way back. Okay, we're going all the way back, yes, to that moment in time. When Scott Derrickson walked away, my literal knee-jerk reaction was, okay, well, this film is very likely going to be sort of Age of Ultron-esque. And what I mean by that is the job of this movie is not just to tell a cool story but also to set up a ton of different things that are coming down the road. And the thing that's really significant about Age of Ultron is that that was right around the time when they were planning out Infinity War and Endgame. So right at around that time is when they really started to plan out Infinity War and Endgame heavily over at Marvel. And Age of Ultron is set up 
with a ton, I mean a ton, of setup for Infinity War and Endgame. And also a lot of the movies that are leading up to that and would eventually be paid off in that film. In the same way that that was happening around then, and it was very difficult for um, Joss Whedon, you know, classically he had a lot of trouble with Age of Ultron. He was trying to juggle a lot of stuff. It was a pretty messy experience from for him, from what we understand. Similarly, I think Derrickson, when he took the meeting with Marvel and when he realized what this movie was actually going to be, I think Derrickson was like, nah, fam, I'm cool. Now. Here's the thing about that. Derrickson handled it with absolute grace. He, I think, completely understands what's going on. I don't think he harbors any ill will towards Marvel, towards uh, Feige or anybody. In fact, I think he could even return to the MCU. And I and I really respected the way that he handled that whole situation. But Papa Feige, once this happened, he did what pretty much only Papa Feige can do. He took a lemon and he turned it into the best goddamn lemonade you've ever tasted. Out of fucking nowhere, we get the announcement that Sam Raimi will be coming in and will be directing Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. That's pretty crazy. Raimi's awesome. Obviously, OG Toby Spider-Man stuff. Uh, Evil Dead, on and on. Incredible director. Just this, this felt like such a cool experience. You also get Michael Waldron, who of course is the lead writer on the Loki series, to write the script with Raimi and I probably like with Feige, like other people or whatever. Um, They get that sort of help. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? The stream went live about 10 minutes into the stream. What are you talking about? What does that mean? Is this... Th are we live? Is this thing on? Are we... Are we streaming right now? Anyway. um, So... You sort of have all this evidence at the very start that whatever was going on with Multiverse of Madness was a big deal for Marvel Studios. It was a setup. And... What I'm going to tell you, and this will be uh, put out over the course of a couple of different videos this week. I have a big script that I just wrote, and I'm going to work on several videos all about Multiverse of Madness in the next couple of days. But my belief here is that this was the, the beginning of the setup for Secret Wars. And that over under 16% chance that you're live. Mm, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'd say over, but who knows? Um... That in the same way that Age of Ultron was the beginning of pulling together all of the pieces that would eventually set up Endgame and Infinity War, that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is pulling together all of the pieces for Secret Wars. I've got a very in-depth script that's going to talk about some cool stuff and how that all will play out, in my opinion. Um, but we will go over a little bit of that today as well, because I'm going to show you some cool imagery that mirrors Jonathan Hickman's Time Runs Out comic book stuff, okay? So, after this happens, we hear a bunch of different rumors and crazy reports about Multiverse of Madness. There are several different plot leaks. A lot of the people in the scooping insider community are all, like, talking to each other behind the scenes, trying to figure out what is what. Okay? We hear some things. There's some rumors. Yada, yada, yada. At this time, and this is going to become important important as we move forward at this time we heard there was a different group of illuminati and that yes charles xavier was a member of it but you were going to have people like bowler the brave you were going to have peggy carter you were going to have uh, as uh, captain britain you were going to have uh maria rambo i believe uh as captain marvel you were going to have mordo and then I think there's another one I'm missing, actually. Who was the original Illuminati that was rumored? Because I believe it was 6, uh, Vivian 12. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Who was that Illuminati group, guys? Help me out here. Because it was, I remember the five of them. But I don't remember who was rumored to be the last one. Regardless. That was a rumor there. Balder. I don't think Reed was 
No, I don't think Reed was rumored at that point. No, I don't think Namor was ru- rumored at that point either. We're going through a story here. Okay. So, then, then what happens is we hear, holy shit, they're going to do six weeks minimum of extensive reshoots. Like, you're talking 12-hour days, six days a week minimum. That's like a whole nother movie. Okay? So, at this point, we hear, oh, shit, they're shooting a whole nother movie. Now, when this happened, yeah, Mordo, for sure, was in, was in there as well. Yeah. So, at this point, we're hearing a bunch of different things. Number one, they were like, okay, well, they got to pull this thing together. It feels like it's a little all over the place. Like, maybe it didn't score that great or whatever. But the primary goal of the reshoots, in my opinion, was to add in cameos and, and tighten up the crazy multiversal elements that were going on. Okay? So at that point, we were like, oh, shit, like, what are they changing? Like, what's going on? What what are they changing? Okay. After that six week reshoot period was over, there was even evidence out there to suggest that they were adding additional footage, doing additional photography, even beyond the scheduled reshoots. And that some of this could be to add even more fun cameos into the movie. Okay. Now, on top of that, and this is very important for the discussion we're about to have, Marvel also decided around that same time that they were going to tighten up on leaks and spoilers, and they started to muscle people that they had leverage over. Grace Randolph did a big video about this. I've talked about this in several videos and in several streams. But the idea is, the idea is, Marvel said... Stop talking about leaks. Stop talking about spoilers. And what now is happening, and this is some of my opinion, like I can't confirm that everybody is doing this, but this I know some people are doing this. People are starting to write articles and make videos or, you know, whatever, and say, here's a theory I have about Multiverse of Madness. And they know damn well that it's actually real. But instead of saying it's confirmed as a leak, they frame it as a rumor. They frame it as a theory. And they do that because, again, Marvel is trying to tighten up on leaks and spoilers and and stop that from happening. Okay, I say all of that to sort of frame what we're about to talk about because there's layers to this shit. And I've never experienced a movie like this before where we have a pretty good idea of several things that are going on. We also have six weeks of additional reshoots that could have added all sorts of stuff. We also have additional photography happening after that to add stuff into the movie. And we have Feige tightening up leaks all over the internet. Okay? So. Bananas. Banana night muffin on a Sunday morning. That's That's what we're dealing with. Okay, and so as we go through this, we're going to explore. Is this thing happening? Where is this coming from? What do we know about this? Etc. Etc. Now, let me shift in here. I want to make my face a little bit smaller so that we can actually get into the to the footage and whatnot. We'll go at like this kind of a level here. Okay. Okay, so we don't actually need the audio on this too much, so I'm going to just put it like that, okay? Now, we're just going to go through it. going to break down everything I think I know about this and speculate. And several other videos are coming out soon, okay? Okay, so... Every night, I have uh, the same dream. This is pretty consistently talked about in several of the leaks and in many of the discussions I've had with different folks, okay? What's happening here is Strange is having visions of his variants dying throughout the multiverse, okay? What's the drop today? Ooh, 
girl. Fantastic Four. Oh, the wedding. Oh, shit. Of Sue. Elisa, if you're watching, you really got to try to get this drop. This is dope. We got to try to get this today. We got about six minutes on that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Strange is having visions of his other variants throughout the multiverse dying. Okay, that's pretty that's pretty well established. A lot of different leaks and a lot of different insiders have sort of hinted at that being the thing. Uh, Tyler Hill, welcome to the Nerd Ventures. You are a Nerd Venture now. Okay, so that's what's going on there. This is shot from Carmitage, probably when Wanda's coming in to just fuck everything up. Okay, wait. So, hang on. Let's stop for a second here. Spoiler warning. Sp spoiler warning. I'm going to go over, to the best of my ability, the most accurate shit I can as far as what's going on in the movie. If you have a problem with spoilers, if you don't like that kind of stuff, then you want to get on out of here. Uh, what is this scene here with the with the footage or with the chair? Some people saying, is that Professor X's chair? Absolutely possible. We don't know. Seems like just something kind of out of context there. Okay. This right here is from Carmitage, you know, at a point where we think Wanda's going to come in and absolutely decimate these mother truckers. And it's going to be real bad. Okay. This right here looks to be uh, Defender Strange or... Is this uh, Wong or Defender Stranger America? I actually don't fully know. See, right here it looks like it's America. But in this shot, I'm actually not so certain that it's America. It could be. Like, that could be America. Regardless, this thing right here is likely a demon. Okay? And it is a demon that has something to do with the Darkhold. We believe that uh, Shumagorath, uh, Gargantos... Whatever the fuck this demon is, a lot of different demons are going to be involved in this movie. And for the most part, they are hunting America. And they are hunting America at the bequest of Wanda because Wanda needs America Chavez's power to be able to traverse the multiverse. Okay. Now, as far as what this location is, I have no idea, but we think we see it again in the trailer. And there's a lot of stuff here that's seemingly happening in between the spaces of different universes, uh, which, again, we'll talk more about. But this, like, monster thing here got America there. Now, this is a really important shot here. This is Defender Strange. And am I in 4K here? Hang on now. Why am I in 720? Put me in 1080. Okay, so this is one of the portals that America is able to open using, you know, her universe powers. But this is Doctor Strange. Oh, perfect, perfect cut. Okay, this is Defender Strange, and he's dead. You see the, the scars and the, the sort of cut up nature of his face here? Yeah, he gone. From what we understand, many variants will die in this film. Okay. Uh, so this is Defender Strange. By the way, this is also the body that Strange will possess at the end of the movie that we also see in this trailer, which I will talk about when we get there, okay? What's happening here? America Chavez, through her portal thing, escaping a demon, Strange likely jumps in to try to save her there, gets cut up, and dies. This body will be shown to our Doctor Strange, I think to earlier on in the movie, and he's going to be like, holy shit. Like, it's going to be kind of a holy shit moment when he sees a, a dead body of himself. This is also a dream he's having, right? Remember, he's dreaming about his variants dying in the multiverse. This whole, like, time watch thing. This is, like, a little bit of just before the wedding. Probably some shots of, like, oh, man, I wish I would have married Christine. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's stop here. What this is, and I, I this is actually going to be really important for the video I'm going to do later. This right here is the multiverse, and it has something to do with how the multiverse is all tied together. And I want to show you now this shot here from Jonathan Hickman's comic. Uh, this is the Time Runs Out comic that leads up to Secret Wars. Now... We'll talk more about this in the videos coming, but for now, I just want you to recognize that this is 
a model of the multiverse, which you see pop up actually several different times in this run with Hickman. This character is Black Swan, and what she's saying here is they evolved in the multiverse and moved between universes at will. They're dead worlds finding healthy new worlds to be devoured. They make maps and rob the wheel of those that would be tested by it. Now, that's kind of like, you, you might not understand all that jargon without like knowing what's going on in this run, but I want to jump ahead just a little bit here and show you these shots. Now, we've actually talked about this before, but they popped up again in a big way in this trailer. You see these glass prisons here? And right here, you have a character of Black Swan, and you have a variant of Terax. Terax, I believe, the Enlightened. This guy was a herald for Galactus in his universe, which was destroyed. Okay. These prisons, we're going to see in the, uh, in the trailer, okay? But again, just want to show you, going back to this, this is a map of the universe, or the multiverse rather, and the spaces in between, how to travel between them in what she calls the wheel or uh, the game of worlds, which has to do with the multiverse collapsing in on itself, okay? So this image is also seen at the end of WandaVision, when Wanda is studying the Darkhold, and by the way, what is this down here on the floor? Does that look like the, maybe the Darkhold to you? Does that quite possibly look like a book? A Darkhold-like book on the ground? Yeah, it is. And something to do with dar the Darkhold and studying the Darkhold is showing something about the multiverse. That's going to become important later. Okay? And he is examining it, trying to understand what is going on here, and shutting it back and putting it back in the book, okay? Okay, now, obviously, like, this is very similar to what we see in um, What If with Doctor Strange, you know, he manipulates a fixed point in time and this reality starts just being destroyed. And so this is obviously something that is supposed to parallel to that. And I think you will see that Supreme Strange from that universe in this movie. It's something to do with uh, breaking these points in time. It's going to be a big deal. Okay. It looks visually stunning. I love it. This is Christine Palmer's wedding which again is in a lot of the leaks and will be interrupted by, well, Shuma slash whatever her face is. Okay, so let's talk about this. We called this pretty early on, by the way, that this place with these the trees and everything is an illusion. And we think this is an illusion that Wanda creates... Uh, much in the way she did Westview, just to kind of occupy herself, perhaps mask what's really going on, her true intentions. And this will come up later in the trailer as well. I do think it's interesting that Vision is saying, or that she's saying Vision had some thoughts about the multiverse. That's pretty cool. So again, here we are at Karma Taj. Uh, Rintar, the Minotaur. Cool character. Pretty cool that uh, he's going to be in this movie as well. And you know, shout, dude. Uh, you know, shout out to Paul because like he made a joke about how that's the least crazy thing in this trailer is a giant green minotaur. And Marvel's kind of arrived at an interesting place when that's what's going on. It's true. It's true. Okay, so here we go with some like weird space between universes, either in the quantum realm or something akin to what is going on in uh, the TVA and at the end of uh, Loki. With he who remains okay here we go another shot of this place where all the realities disappearing okay now we start to get into the crazy stuff the good stuff here we see steven within one of the glass prisons that again we see teased out in uh that jonathan hickman comic book he's getting these uh handcuffs put on him you know with the green energy and all that He is being escorted by a ton of Ultron drones. And he is in 
some kind of a facility here. And to me, this is probably one of the most intriguing, interesting parts of the movie and the set design. I will go absolutely balls deep into this in the video that I'm doing later today. But for now, I will just say that this feels to me like a pretty strong indicator that this Illuminati is a multiversal Illuminati and that this place, wherever this is, is a place that exists outside of the multiverse, which in Marvel Comics, there are like a couple of different options, right? So it could be something like the Citadel where um, the Captain Britain Corps operates from. It could be something like the facility where the Avengers uh, Forever storyline goes. Play and you've got like this place within the Quantum Realm, I believe, uh, that has a infinite mansion. I think I forget what it was called, but it was like this place where all of these different Avengers from throughout the multiverse are all chilling at. That's a pretty strong contender for me simply because there's also been a tease through merchandising <clears throat> that you will get an Avengers team in this movie and that it will be a multiversal group of Avengers. There's a literal Avengers logo on some merchandising for Doctor Strange. And that Infinite Mansion place is also, I believe, and I'm going to have to double check here, I believe it has something to do with where the Young Avengers spring up from. And there's a lot of cool things that are going on there. Uh, I don't know what these statues with the wings could be or could refer to. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what this sword in the circle could be referring to. Some people are saying Black Knight maybe or something crazy like that. I don't know. But regardless... This really does look to me like a significant location that will not just be in this movie. I think this location will be visited again. That's what I think. Now, let's talk about these Ultron drones. They're not quite Ultron drones, are they? They're really more like Iron Man drones. They look a lot more like Iron Man than they do Ultron. And we believe this will be because they are from a universe where Iron Man put a suit of armor around the world. He did the Ultron thing, but maybe without Ultron. Instead of Ultron taking over the world, Tony Stark did. Iron Man did. And so this Iron Legion universe, something that's been rumored quite a bit, uh throughout the uh, the sort of lead up to this movie, Iron Legion and the Iron Legion universe. Um, so I think these things look freaking awesome. It obviously does tease out Iron Man possibly being involved or in this movie. And then this is where shit just goes crazy, okay? Because we see him being brought before what we think is the multiversal Illuminati. And we hear and kind of see Charles there, Professor Xavier, being teased out. Now, to me, I think this is pretty wild because it's crazy that they would tease uh, the X-Men like this, this early, still several months before the movie. And if they're simultaneously trying to not like stop leaks and stuff from happening, it's a little bit odd that then they would turn around and tease something like this. But I think that... From a producer's perspective, which is why I just, I really love, uh, you know, Feige and kind of what he does. I think from a producer's perspective, it makes sense to utilize the X-Men as a huge draw for this film. And so in the same way that the Spider-Men and those rumors became an important part of what we were going to get in No Way Home, the X-Men will be used as a very interesting sort of draw to this movie. Okay? Now, let's talk about what we see here. Let's talk about what we see here. Some kind of hooded figure walking here. Okay? 
So that's obviously the first thing that 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 comes to mind that I think is really interesting. Some kind of hooded figure there. Really, really cool. You've got some figure right here. You know? You've got a figure over here. Now you've got six chairs. And it seems like not everybody's present for this meeting here. But that more or less, this is the Illuminati. Now before we even speculate on who who is in here, let's talk about something that I think is really important. Remember when I just said that we had the pre-reshoots movie, we had the reshoots movie, and then we're even getting more additional photography. In the original leaks, it said that you got Boulder the Brave, that you got uh, Captain Marvel, that you had Captain Britain, and you had Mordo and Professor X, right? Well... My Time to Shine Hello said after that, in the reshoots, they added Reed Richards for sure to the Illuminati. And then she reported that they were adding even more people to the Illuminati. Now, what I think that means is that they pulled a Mando season two on the cast and crew. Dr. Doom would never join the Illuminati. Josh, that's not true. In fact, I can show you. It would take me a second to find it, but within the Hickman run, there was a universe where Magneto and Doom were on the Illuminati. It was not our universe, but it, there was a universe where that happened. Now, let me explain what's going on here. In the first version of this scene, before the reshoots, they probably shot with Benedict. They probably shot with a stand-in, a stand-in for Charles Xavier. And they probably shot with some of these other characters, like Captain uh, Britain, all these different characters. Okay? I think they changed it all. And I think that when you come into this scene in the theatrical cut, you will see a more traditional Illuminati. Maybe Black Bolt. Maybe Reed Richards. Maybe Professor Xavier. Maybe Namor. You know, maybe, uh, maybe Iron Man, you know, and so it's, it's hard to say if what we're seeing in this shot is accurate to the current version of the movie. Are they just playing with us? Was this something they shot and then changed a lot? Is it part of the new sequence and part of the old sequence? Like a lot of people think this is either, um, a Black Panther variant because of the necklace or that this is Reed Richards. And if you lighten this up, it does look a good bit like Reed Richards. Let me see. Like, this is kind of interesting. This is on the poster. People were saying this looks like Deadpool on the poster. I agree. It could be Deadpool. And then this right here, if you like lighten this up, it definitely looks like there's something going on there, some blue. It looks like it could be a Fantastic Four. That's probably Reed. Okay. So it could be Reed here, and it could be Charles here. This could be Doom. I highly doubt it. If it's Doctor Doom, man, I would... Phew, holy shit. Like, that would be crazy, right? But in all likelihood, you're seeing a combination here of the old version, a new version, and not even... I mean, there still could be additional stuff added here. My gut tells me that they're going to have a very traditional looking Illuminati. Some of these other characters may well still be in the movie, like a Captain Carter. Like when we see Captain Marvel later on, and I believe it's Maria Rambo. It's confirmed that that's Mordo. It could be Mordo. Mordo would make a lot of sense and sort of replace Steven as the, the Sorcerer Supreme on the Illuminati. That could absolutely make a lot of sense. It would line up with some of the pre -viz stuff that we saw, right? But the point is, this group of Illuminati, I think, going to be traditional in the sense that the members will feel very similar to the Hickman Illuminati. And... I just don't know if what you're seeing here is, is going to be completely accurate. It's multiversal, and it's going to look like what we got before, okay? Now, let's keep going. 
Again, pretty wild that they would tease out Charles Xavier, but he was one of the first things that leaked and leaked big and is absolutely real. Now, this is kind of interesting. This could be the Savage Land uh, or just a different timeline. And when this pops, or well, actually when this pops here. Oh, wait, did it, did it not? There's a portion that looks as though it's cartoony. Oh, maybe it's like right here. Yeah, that little blip right there. Dang, it's like really hard to find, huh? Right there, when it starts to turn. Yeah, you can see it looks cartoony, right? And we pointed this out yesterday, but we weren't 100% sure what was going on here. I don't know what to make of this. This could be across the Spider-Verse. This could be X-Men 97. This could be several different things. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, with that shot specifically. And it could just be an illusion, too. It could not necessarily mean anything. But it's pretty wild. Obviously, visually, this movie's going to be stunning. Supreme Strange. I think he plays a pretty fucking minor role in the movie. Uh, a lot of people are like, yo, is this Iron Man? Uh, no, it is not. Uh, a lot of people thinking this could be any number of things and or people. Uh Nah, it is not. This is Captain Marvel. And it's, I believe it's either Monica or Maria. I'm leaning towards Maria myself. Uh, but here's the deal. And this is, this is just sort of like prognostication. But if Iron Man is in this movie and if it is, um, if it is Tom Cruise, then what he shot was super limited. Because at this point, many are reporting that Tom Cruise is not in this movie. Could he have shot something secretly? Sure, but that's going to really limit what they shot. Uh, you know, could be just some stuff for him controlling the AI and controlling the different bots. That was sort of a rumor out there. And I could see something like that shot and kept pretty quiet. But they did not shoot Iron Man to as like superior Iron Man with uh, Tom Cruise. Like, I'd love to be wrong, guys. But that's not what that is. That is uh, Maria Rambo coming in to coming in blasting, and she's probably gonna get killed as well. By the way, just so everybody knows. So let's keep going on this. Chet, where's my music, man? What the fuck's going on? What the fuck's going on, man? God damn it! Okay. So here we go. Let's keep going on this. Blowing through walls and stuff. Now, you can see these figures with the wings here, meaning this is in the same place. This is the Illuminati. And I'm just going to tell you what's happening here, okay? Again, I apologize. Spoilers, 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 blah, blah, blah. If you don't want that kind of stuff, then get on out of here. Here's the deal, man. Wanda is possessing the Wanda from this universe. Okay, so our Wanda, a.k.a. Darth Vader Wanda, Bro, what the fuck? Dude, just... Music, man. Get the music going on, bro. I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> okay. So the Wanda from our universe, Darth Vader Wanda, has possessed the body of this Wanda that's here within this universe. Okay? Again, she can't pass into other universes she can only possess or astral project into the body of this wanda this wanda possessed by our wanda is gonna fucking kill everybody basically this is her killing everybody at carmertage you break the rules and you're a hero i break the rules by the way, this is really, really cool. I don't know what the what the deal is with this. This looks a lot like Defender Strange, though. Um, so that's kind of interesting, huh? So let's talk about this. This is the shot, guys, from the beginning of the trailer. Strange is wearing the same outfit. This is outside of Wonder Gore Mountain. Let's see if I can find it here. 
Yeah, here. Same stuff. Same outfit here. And remember, we called this as an illusion a long time ago. And it does appear that that is true. And from what we understand, too, and right about this moment when they're in, like, Wondergore Mountain with all the trees and she's pruning the trees, pretty much right at that moment, Steven's going to figure out that Wanda is the one that summoned Shuma, or rather Gargantos, that Wanda is the one responsible for all this shit going down. And I believe that she'll reveal that she's been studying the dark hold. This whole place is becoming corrupted with dark magic. And it's go time. Now, what is happening here in this scene? I'm not 100% sure, actually. But what I think is going on is that this is within the mind of Wanda during the conflict, perhaps when she's trying to possess Wanda. Like, what I'm saying is Darth Vader Wanda is trying to possess the nice Wanda from that universe. And what I think is going on here is the two of them kind of having like a moment within each other's mind, like seeing what's going on and whatnot. Here we have Mordo fighting Strange in the same place. Again, the multiversal place of the Illuminati is. It's Carmitage getting bloated up. I think, honestly, her punching looks super fucking weak, bro. Like, this, this movie's going to be amazing. But what kind of punch is this, dude? This shit's weak, dog. Uh, regardless, though, very powerful. She's blowing some shit up. Now, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is very important. This is total decimation and destruction behind her at the facility. It is at the place where all the Illuminati is. There's a bunch of blood all over her. This is the blood of other people, bro. And maybe a little bit of her being corrupted as well. But, like, she's messing people up, okay? And this shot here, as we zoom into her eye, what is this? These are the same prison cells that we talked about earlier. And there's a figure in one of these cells on the right. It's probably America Chavez. And this is probably a moment where she's grabbing her up to, to finally get her power or at least attempt to. Okay. Okay, so what is this? What is this, right? Kind of interesting here. Um, again, probably likely towards the end of the movie. This is our strange, maybe still stuck in a different universe, astral projecting back into the body of Defender Strange. And you can see the cuts on his face and shit. Like, you see how he's got those same cuts across the face that we saw that Defender Strange had when he was rolling through that portal? Yeah, this guy. He's got the same cuts. Okay, so he's performing some kind of a spell. I think there's a better shot of him in the trailer. Is there not? I saw a better shot on Twitter. Regardless, this is him going into the sort of zombified body that we will see at the very beginning of the movie. There's a Defender Strange that dies, that America's going to bring in and be like, yo, check this out. This is you, but dead. Strange is going to be like, yo, that's my dream. Holy shit. And then it'll come back full circle because he'll possess that body later. And I don't know exactly what this is, but it's him using a spell via his dead body. And I can't help but think that some of those demony crazy type things are either variants of Strange or something to do with like corruption uh, of his body as it's de dead and gone or something like that. Like, I don't really know. Uh, by the way, behind him, maybe Darkhold Castle. Maybe Darkhold Castle. I don't know. Maybe. It's crazy, huh? Absolutely crazy. 
I thought we saw another better picture of Zombie Strange, but maybe not. No? Is it over here? Hmm. Okay, so that is pretty much in as best of uh, detail as I can an explanation of everything that's going on there. Okay. Now there's other stuff to talk about. There's other stuff to get into. Um, but maybe some of that should be saved for other videos. Uh, and whatnot. Okay. Oh, it's in the, it's in the TV spot. Oh, and I missed Vivi. God damn it. I got too into it, man. I can't believe 24 minutes went by. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Now I'm going to have to try to pick one of those. No, I have the super chat thing uh, set up for sure. Josh, read the chat. I'm reading it right now. Z Zombie Strange is on the TV spot. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where that is. Yeah, and it looks like way more like him, right? Okay. So that's kind of, uh, I missed it like 50 years ago. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. It was gone. Yeah, it was gone probably faster than that, to be honest with you. Okay. So that's as best that I can, the full explanation for everything that's going on in this trailer, okay? Oh, yeah, Zombie Wanda. What's up with that? Uh, that is Wanda just the body falling apart. So a couple of different things going on in this movie. Wanda is going to be possessing that body of the good Wanda, and she's going to start to deteriorate because of corruption from the Darkhold. And by the time, like, Wanda's going to be looking, like, real ugly. Our Wanda, by the end of the movie, right? That's something we heard about. So. That's a thing. Let me see if there's anything else I missed. Okay, there are plenty of other uh, things in the movie that are not being seen yet. Like, for instance, Cleo. And I have no idea. I have no idea exactly what Clea is doing. I'll talk more about this in videos and whatnot uh, coming out. But I also think, again, this movie is setting up future things. Okay. Okay. And let me just tell you one thing real quick too, and, and I will I will tease this out uh, uh, just for that video that's dropping later. You guys got to check that out. It's gonna be really really cool. Um, I think that this Illuminati is gonna get wiped out, but I think that Strange will be inspired by this Illuminati and will come back to this location and will run a multiversal watch group of his own Illuminati, which will lead us to Secret Wars. And I think those prisons that you see that keep him, America, potentially other people in prisons will come into play again down the road. Okay. There were seven seats? I don't think so. I think there's six seats and there's not one in the middle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's probably, like, unless I'm missing something, I believe that Professor X is in the middle. Nope. No, he is not. He is not in the middle. He's on the, he's uh towards the right. If you look at the angle of that shot, I believe he's on the right or the left side. If you're looking at it, the right side, if you're looking out from it.
Yeah, there are not seven seats. There's only six. Yeah. Clea. Going to be cool. And the rumors are, of course, that it's going to be... Uh, Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron will be Cleo. Pretty interesting. That's seven, Josh. Handicap parking for Professor X? Uh, maybe. Professor X wouldn't need a seat if he's in his chair. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, let's get into Q&A. Hang on just a gosh dang second, everybody. Hang on just a gosh dang second. Okay. We'll get into all the soupies, see what you guys have to say and everything like that. I do want to say to uh, everybody out there, of course, yes, Super Chats help support the channel. Keep the lights on over here. I'll read over every single Super Chat that comes in within reason. I also want to say today's stream and all the streams over here are brought to you by the Nerd Ventures, the wonderful people you see in chat with a badge next to their name. They get a ton of cool benefits, including 20% off our Teespring store merch. They get access to behind-the-scenes streams like the one we will do today at 1 p.m., and the one we will do Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, they get the emojis, the badge, all sorts of fun benefits for the Nerd Avengers. But there's also reported benefits, rumors of becoming more prosperous, becoming better looking, taller, stronger, faster, having drive and power, staying hungry and devouring. And stuff like that. Uh, become a nerd vendor today. It will literally be the best decision you've ever made for your life, your well being, for your future estate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hashtag not financial advice. I'm not a doctor. Don't sue me, bro. All right. Let's get into some QA, man. Let's see what y'all got to say about all this, huh? Uh, Rick Stain says From one expecting man to another, can't wait for this doctor's train to the multiverse of madness. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and I'm pretty excited, too, uh, for Das Baby as well. I think that's going to be a really fun time. But, yeah, this movie's nuts, man. And I think I did. I tried to do a good job of explaining, like, there have been layers to this, so we don't know exactly what's going on. But I'm trying to get you the most accurate info I can. Either way, it looks awesome. Like, there's a lot of understated stuff in the movie, too. Like, the, the visual elements look really creepy. It looks incredible. You know, so it's going to be dumb. RG says, let's send Delahalla. The fact they put that Patrick Stewart teaser into the trailer leads me to believe his appearance will be a surprise, not because he's Professor X, but because he's the 90s X-Men cartoon Professor X. Okay, yeah, let's talk about this for a second. Um, I think this is real. I think that is the Professor Xavier from the X-Men 97 show, which will make X-Men 97 canon, which will likely canonize, I believe, some of the X-Men from the 90s, like the 92 show. Uh, and there are a lot of people talking about this, and again, they're talking about it as a theory and a rumor, but some of these people, I'm pretty sure, know that that's real. I don't know that it's real, but I think some of them do, and so I'm really feeling like that is the Charles from the X-Men 97 show. Uh, but yeah, thanks for pointing that out, bro. Uh, MCU Drew says over under 88.92% Multiverse of Badass is the best nerdy content of the year. It's going to be hard to top. Like, it's going to be really, really hard to top. I mean, Kenobi technically has a chance just because Kenobi is straight fire. You know, and those characters, awesome. So, we can hope for that. But, it's worth mentioning that I think the real reason why you didn't get a Kenobi trailer yesterday and the real reason that Kenobi's not coming out on May the 4th is because of Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is going to suck the air out of the room. This trailer absolutely dominated and destroyed uh, the internet and Kenobi probably wanted no part of that and Kenobi probably moved to later on in May to get away from Multiverse of Madness and that just is what it is man T Love says the five dollar holla hiding Toby and Andrew in No Way Home because uh, built hype the only way to top that is actually showing Sir Pat agree or disagree thoughts take my money yeah so I think this is a fair 
thought. And I think that, yes, they need to get that sort of speculation train running. And perhaps because they've definitely tried to cut off, like, the John Krasinski thing. Like, I heard they were pretty pissed about the John Krasinski, uh, Reed Richards thing coming out. I heard they were pretty upset about that. Um, yeah, so there's some stuff that they were a little upset about. And maybe some of those things they're trying to keep hush-hush. Uh, while the Patrick Stewart thing, they're like, maybe if we put this out or tease this out, that will become the discussion and that will distract from some other things. I don't know, though. Joey Ebb says, Illuminati time. Professor X, let's go. Member for 14 months. Thank you for all the support, man. And yes, it's time, baby. Like, I'm so excited for this movie, obviously, but I'm really excited for what I think it will lead to. And the run up to Secret Wars is going to be absolutely incredible. So I'm here for it. Santiago L says, Josh, do you think Reed Richards is a member of the Illuminati in the trailer from yesterday? Yes. But let me explain. I'm actually more confident that John Krasinski's Reed Richards will be in the movie as a member of the Illuminati than I am that we saw him in the trailer yesterday. Marvel hides stuff in their trailers. Marvel does weird stuff with their visual effects. So I don't know that that was him in that shot, but I think he'll be in the movie. Uh, Orange Grove 55 says Feige comes through again. Meanwhile, Lucasfilm asleep at the wheel again. Kennedy's retirement can't come soon enough. Yeah, so I, look, I tend to agree. I think that the whole operation over at Lucasfilm is like 20 years behind the times. But having said that, it is possible, as I sort of just mentioned, maybe they just wanted to move away from Doc Strange, and that's okay, too. You know, like, you can't really blame them for that. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate the support, though. Lars says, Superior Iron Man. I highly doubt it, my friend. I highly doubt it. Uh, but dream on. Tyler Hill is a nerd venture. So welcome, Tyler. You are a nerd venture now. Appreciate you. Mitch Griff, with a member for four months, says, Super Bowl stream was great last night. Multiverse of Madness hype. Take my money. Yeah, man. Super hype, right? Thanks for being there, too. It was a good stream. Tyler says, still waiting on Jar Jar Binks show. <laughs> yeah, bro, me too. Use it in big doo-doo this time. Brand Stewart says, that 30-second Super Bowl spot has plenty of footage not in the trailer, including good look at Zombie and Defender Strange. That's where a lot of those images come from. And yes, this is true. Um, but yeah, I think I pretty much just tied it all together for you, regardless of uh, that footage or whatever. So, Patrick says, can we all agree that in this Illuminati wide shot, most of the figures are probably CGI'd out for the trailer. Yes, or Patrick, they are the first version of that scene. So what I think, what I mean by that is they probably shot this with other characters and a stand-in for Patrick Stewart, and they shot a lot of stuff pre-reshoots of that scene and the multiversal battle. Then they reshot parts of that scene and they will interplay the original cut of that with the reshoot stuff so that the Illuminati you see in that scene is going to be way crazier. Like Reed, maybe Black Bolt, maybe Iron Man, uh, Professor X, etc. Right? So, yeah. That shot is deceptive. Parth says, with a very generous $10 holla, says, Sup, Josh? Mind equal blown by the trailer. Hope you're well. Yeah, man, I'm doing really well. I'm excited for this week of... Uh, I'm super excited for this week of content. I think it's going to be really fun. I've got some Star Wars content to make. I've got a lot of Marvel content to make. Um, so, yeah, I'm super excited, man. Thanks for the support. Flatbread Zombie says, Josh, do you think Doc Strange will ever wear his yellow gloves again? I mean, it's possible, bro. It's possible. I don't... Um, I don't know. It's not really high up on my totem pole, to be honest, of things I'm worried about, you know? But I uh, appreciate the support. Stormy says that Multiverse of Madness trailer was total madness. This movie will change the MCU. Moon Knight Cape is dope, and Black Adam will be amazing. Dr. Fate and Hawkman, fire, fire, fire. Yeah, so uh, I will say I was shocked at how good the JSA looks in that little spot for Black Adam. So I am a little excited for that. It's it's right up there between Flash and Black Adam as far as what I'm most excited for from DC. So uh, yeah, that looks great. Moon Knight, though. How about that cape? How about that trailer? How about the Batarang that comes back or Moonarang or whatever you want to call it? Absolutely incredible. Uh, Moon Knight's going to blow a lot of minds as well. So 
pretty cool. Thanks, Stormy. Appreciate you, bro. Normie Sturge says, Notice how it looks like Ultron breaking the universe in What If. What If needs the respect it deserves LMAO certified top five MCU film already. Yeah, it probably is top five already. Um, yeah, What If is going to play an important role. One of the things I'm most interested in here, guys, is the TVA, the Multiversal Illuminati, and Kang. How does all of this tie together? Does what if and that tie in as well? Like how many different groups are watching over the multiverse? You know what I mean? That is something I think that will be explored more. MK Matt says, is it possible they used a body double for a lot of the potential Tom Cruise Iron Man action scenes and only actually filmed him with the helmet off? It is possible. Here's why I don't think that is happening. They have a ton of cameos in this movie they have a ton of stuff to do in this film the difference between this movie and its cameos and both uh both well, spider-man in no way home is that at one point it, they were like okay we we've signed a preliminary contract and or we know that these guys are going to be in the movie maybe we haven't dotted all the i's and crossed all the t's but it looks like they're going to be in the film at that point you start shooting with a body double it's very similar to what they did in Civil War, where they shot a lot of Tom Holland stuff with a body double before they even finalized that deal to share that character with Sony. Tom Cruise and Iron Man is not important enough to the plot of this film to shoot body double stuff and then do a bunch of stuff to put Tom Cruise into it. Now, that's just my opinion. I would love to be wrong, uh, but no, I don't think so, bro. I don't think so. And I also actually don't think Tom Cruise is in the movie. Jansen Baker with the $10 holler says, There are dinosaurs before Strange and Friend break into the animated, as you called it. Also, when Strange wakes up, he raises his hands like to do magic, but stops when he sees he was dreaming. Ooh, that is pretty interesting. That is pretty interesting. Angel Stark says, tagged you on Twitter, my bros. Looks like Superior Iron Man to me. Thoughts? Am I going Stark crazy? Yeah, I think everybody is... Yeah, I don't think that's real, bro. Like, I understand, and, like, I get it, and it's hyped. But, nah, fam, that ain't Tony. Like, I just gotta be real. Like, that's not Tony. Uh, Mike says with the $10 holla, uh, statue is a memorial to Strange at Illuminati base. That's Black Panther on the end and Mordo on the right. Professor X tells him he was who brought them together and died trying to stop it all. Possible. Possible. I don't know that I agree, but Possible. I also think these Illuminati members are all from separate universes, so they don't share a history together other than the time they spend together in the multiverse. Okay? So, there's a lot of options and possibilities, but I don't think that there was a straight... Like, wherever they are at, I think is actually between universes. It is not a universe. This is not a universe they're going to visit. It is a combination of universes, likely within... Uh, the quantum realm. Nuck and Futt says the five dollar holla says, "What are your most watch movie slash show slash comic stuff the normies need to see before Multiverse of Madness drops?" Also, let's talk Vox Machina sometime. Yeah, Vox Machina is dope. The latest batch of episodes I thought were great. Super fun stuff. Comics that you need to read. Uh, I mean, I lo look, I love the Hickman stuff. Time Runs Out was great, but that's going to be a lot of reading, so I don't expect everybody to go out and read all that stuff uh, to get ready for it. Um, I don't know. I will tell you the stuff that's circulating in my mind. The 90s X-Men cartoon, especially at the f end of the third or fourth season when they go to the Nexus of Time and Immortus is there. That shit's pretty interesting. Um... WandaVision, particularly the last couple of episodes in the post credit scene. Uh, no Way Home. Endgame. You know. Those are the things that are rotating in my mind. And then, you know, Secret Wars. Holy shit. Hang on. Okay, Rogue Soul says, what are the odds that those are not Tony Stark Ultron bots, but rather more accurate Hank Pym Ultron bots? I think that makes more sense, in my opinion. Absolutely could be the case. Could be the case. 
I don't think so, but it could be the case. I think that it's going to be called the Iron Legion, though, which makes me think, again, it's Tony. Beyond says, Josh, what site do you use to pull up comics? So that was Comixology. That's where I buy my digital books. So, yeah. Merced Buckets with a $10 holla, very generous, says, Did anybody talk about or notice when America Chavez and Strange go through her star portal, there is a Cartoon World portal immediately after the dinosaur portal. Slow or pause the trailer at that moment. Yes, we talked about that. Not sure what it is. Could be X-Men 97. Could be Across the Spider-Verse. Could be something else. Who knows for sure? But yes, we talked about it. It's pretty cool, huh? Gavin says, do you think the White Vision plays a part in any of this? I think if Wanda is going to turn back to good, he would be a big part of that. She needs love. I mean, you want me to just say what I think is going to happen? Nah, man. I don't think White Vision plays a part in it at all. I think her kids seeing... <clears throat> I think when she is... Standing in front of her children. Finally. She's finally got them. And they look at her. And she's hideous. She's evil. She's covered in blood. And her kids reject her. And are afraid of her. I think that'll be her moment. You know? And I think there's more to her arc after this as well. Jensen Baker says with a $5 holla, if Deadpool is ever in the MCU trailer, have him aware it's a trailer. He starts derailing it and then release a version without him after. That would be brilliant. That'd be really cool. The Tommy Dean says, member for four months, says, hey, Josh, streams kept me company during knee rehab and I'm able to perform again. Thanks for doing what you're doing, my guy. Also, Toby in Morbius and Doctor Strange 2. I think he's in Doctor Strange 2. I don't know if he's in Morbius. I doubt he's in Morbius, but you never know. Did I break down the Moon Knight stuff? No, not really, but I don't know how much there is to break down. Like, it's just dope. Like, just get hyped up for Moon Knight. That's basically all you got to say. Uh, James Heaton says, Hey, Josh, have they confirmed the original voice actor coming back for animated X-Men? They have a couple of them. If not, do you think Stuart could voice him? Easy work and only 10 episodes at first. Yeah, he could. And uh, maybe he'd be down. I think that would be awesome. Who knows? Luke Soka for life. Tex Venger says, look at my Amethyst badge. 420 Nerd Vengers for life. Luke Soka for life. Nice. Mike House. 20 months as a member. Holy shit. Says, great show yesterday. Clea is in the glass prison in the reflection of Wanda eyes. Maybe. 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 Scott F says, Super Bowl stream was dope. Think we see Toby as Spider-Man from Raimi-verse or maybe another Toby variant? I do. I think you're going to see Toby, yeah. Uh, just Fernie says, remember for 10 months, how many Mephisto Easter eggs were in this trailer? At least 50. At least. Uh, the Herman Circus says, Josh, thanks for all you do. Love your content. The rest of 2022 is going to be crazy. It is indeed going to be crazy. It is indeed going to be crazy. Matei says, here's a little something for the Vox Machina love. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, the show's dope, though. I like it a lot. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. And then let's see here. What did Rogue Soul say? Rogue Soul says, Hank Pym Ultron bots are guards for the Illuminati in the quantum realm, calling it now. Also, you said they're in the quantum realm. So checkmate, sucker. Oh, shit. Did I say that? I said it's possible, bro. I don't know. William says... Uh, Clea and John Constantine, Gene Connolly and Keanu casting. Okay, give me those Lord of the Ring trailer thoughts. Take my money, says Nerd Executive. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate the love. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk uh, Lord of the Rings a little bit here. Okay, and I'm, I want to make a statement about Boba as well before we get out of here. Okay. So, Lord of the Rings trailer. What did you guys think of that trailer?
Nerd of the Rings. What's up, bro? I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of stuff that uh, he and I talked about this morning as well. What did you guys think of the trailer? Put it. Put your thoughts into the chat. So we've got loved it, meh. Trailer was meh. Looks cheap. Thought it was dope. So you see what's going on? Very beautiful. Ghost Rider in the Glass Prison? I doubt it, brother. Okay. So, to me, as really and truly kind of being like somebody on the outside looking in, like, I am a fan of the Peter Jackson movies. I like the lore, but I'm pretty much a normie, right? My outside looking in perspective, I was like, dude, it looks cool. I was like, that shit looks cool. You know? It's definitely a tease. Definitely a tease. Doesn't have a ton of stuff going on in it, right? However, as I looked out there upon the internet to see what fans were saying and things like that, bro, there's a lot of fans not feeling this shit. And what's really interesting to me is it appears as though a lot of hardcore Tolkien fans, hardcore Tolkien fans. So for us, it would be like the, you know, the the sweaties. Sweaties, bro. Like people that understood everything I was talking about today about Marvel. Sweaties. The Lord of the Rings sweaties are very concerned with this show. And this trailer didn't quell any of those concerns. Now, let's get the woke stuff out of the way right away. Okay? Because are there people out there that are worried about the wokeness of the show? Yes. Uh, do I think that represents actually a large group of people? No. I think there are a lot of people that see this and see the wokeness as sort of uh, their opportunity to dunk on it or to, um, you know, just be vocal about some shit, right? So while that is a thing and your mileage may vary, it's just, you know, depending on where you lean, you know, you might feel a certain way about that or not. I don't think that's really what's going on. From what I understand, the real worry is that Amazon took all their Bezos bucks bought the Lord of the Rings license to try to make a Game of Thrones and basically are making a flashy Game of Thrones-esque parody, not parody, but paint-by-numbers version of Tolkien. Tolkien's lore is rich. Very detailed. And it seems like What's going on in this show is a real commercialized, condensed, corporate-y kind of version of Lord of the Rings, okay? And so I think a lot of people, it'll be TV 14, nice. So I think a lot of fans, their worries are not so much that like Amazon's going to just do a bunch of virtual signaling with it, no. What they think is going on is that it's just not going to be handled the way that fans want Tolkien's work to be handled. Okay? And from what I understand, like I talked to Nerd of the Rings about, about this. He said he had a massive stream last night. And he did a poll. And I think he had like 5,000 concurrence or something like that. Like a big stream of people watching uh, the trailer, breakdown of the trailer. And they, I think it was literally like, well, let me see what he said. It's like 70 or 80% of them. Let me double check here. Sixty to 70% said no. They did not like that trailer. So that's worth mentioning, guys. 60 to 70% of the sweats that are watching Nerd of the Rings said no said no and the way the way nerd of the rings explained it to me 
is basically... Oh, bro, the lesbian elves. Come on, we got to get the lesbian elves. I'm all about the lesbian elves, 100%. You need the lesbian elves. If you don't have lesbian elves, I'm going to riot. But here's the point. The trailer didn't quell any of the major concerns from fans. These are mostly characters that are new, that were created by Amazon. These plot points seem pretty basic. The environments look pretty basic. And I think the concerns about the show were not really addressed in the trailer. Okay? So, to me, it's like, okay. You know, okay. I understand where people are at uh, with it. For me, it looks cool. You know what I mean? Like, it looks cool. But I'm pretty normie, so I don't know if I'm the I'm the, the measure of the metric about that. You know what I mean? So we'll see. Basically, we're going to follow the show. We're going to see how it all performs and everything. But this could be how to lose a billion dollars by Amazon, right? Like if they didn't actually uh, stay true enough to the lore, if they didn't pay enough attention to the things that hardcore fans would think about and they made it just for normies and the hardcore base rejects it. And on top of that, the narrative of... Uh, wokeness sort of takes over the discussion because here's the thing if the show's like mediocre then the conversation about the politics of the show will become pretty prevalent because there's not going to be enough like sort of hype or love out there online to sort of distract or take away from the discussion about the issues of the show it's a really weird thing it's almost like what's happening with Star Wars really you know so yeah We'll see. James Heaton says with a ten dollar hala says, has Ryan Reynolds done a lot of YouTube videos in his Deadpool suit? Seems a bit sus that he was wearing his suit at the same time they were filming Strange. Funny coincidence, or is there more to it? I don't know. I think that photo was old. The, the one that everybody thought he was talking about or whatnot. Uh, I think that photo is old, but maybe. I mean, look, I think Deadpool's in it, but. That's just an opinion. I don't know. There's not a lot of evidence. And I don't think him... Uh, like, I don't know exactly what YouTube video you're talking about. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we bitching about the sexuality of non-humans now? No. I only bitch about the sexuality of humans. You know? So I'll hang in the chat chat for like five more minutes, guys. Then I got to get out of here because I got a lot to do today. We got some videos to make. We got some videos to make. How was it woke? Uh, well, I mean, I think that, you know, without seeing it, we can't really say for sure if it's woke or not. I think when people are saying that, it's just a way for them to say it, they're focusing on elements like representation, um, and like political things like that so you know whether or not you call it woke it's kind of one of those situations where i want to tell you like bro we all know what the fuck we're talking about like let it go like that's a very like pedantic dictionary type answer like the people that come in the room and they're like mm, actually according to webster's uh this cannot be woke uh it's it's something else like this like dude get over it you know what we're talking about you know what we're talking about. You know what I mean? So let's call a spade a spade. The fact that they have, uh, you know, black elves front and center. The fact that they have a female front and center. I'm not going to sit here and say it's woke. But I'm also not going to look at people that are calling it woke and be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean? Explain it to me. Why would you call that woke? Oh, all of a sudden, somebody being of a different race is woke. Any woman that's ever been, that's ever been seen on film, is that woke? Man, shut your mouth. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Are they front and center, though? I mean, I don't think they're... So, 
how long was the trailer? Well, like two minutes? As far as I could tell, there are only a few things that happen in the trailer. Okay. You see a lot of like environmental shots, and then you see a few characters. I think you see a young Elrond. I think you see a young uh, Galadriel. And then you also see, as a big part of it, and a big part of the uh, the the spread for the magazine, uh, the Black Elf. You know, and he's like catching a arrow, and then like rethreading or whatever, whatever. It looks cool. Any rumors about Obi-Wan's trailer release? No, I mean, I think at this point, it's probably safe to say May the 4th. I mean, May some people were saying you could get an Obi-Wan trailer this week. That would be wild, bro. Like, that would be absolutely wild. That'd be super cool. <laughs> Look what Rob Liefeld literally just shared. Actually, I'm going to retweet it right now. Oh, yes. Boba Thoughts. Thank you. By the way, everybody, I want to explain something. Just, I want to be very, very clear about something. If you're like really, really far to this one side and you think it's like, it's obviously woke, it's super woke and it's super triggering for you, I probably think you're dumb. And if you're all the way on this side where you're like, things can't be woke. Woke is a, is a bad word. And also, what do you mean? Define yourself so that I can cancel you. I fucking hate you, too. I hate both of those groups of people, like on the like on the way, way, like fringes that like are yelling at each other about this shit. And like, you know, man, yeah, you're all really dumb. Just want to just want to throw that out there. Most of the people that are in the middle that see both sides that are like reasonable and shit. You're my people. Like y'all are y'all are my people. But the people on the way the way, way edges there that are on both sides, man, fuck y'all. And fuck your dumb ass questions too. No. Oh bro, it's all No. Both of you shut the fuck up. You deserve each other. You two deserve each other. Alright, so anyway, let's look at what uh Liefeld just said because it's hilarious. Mm, check this out. Mm, check this out. Deadpool is possibly spotted in the newest post for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And then he retweets it with a laughing thing and a, and a silence face thing. Oh, shit, fam. I think it's probably true. I think Deadpool's gonna be in it. I think it's going to be in it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, we're, we're going to get on out of here. God damn, y'all. God damn, y'all. Every time this happens, every time something like this comes up, man, it's just like, damn, dog. Is this really where we're at? Is this really where we're at with it? It's pretty convenient that a white dude is defining wokeness. Just saying, uh, I'd like to say it with all due respect, fuck you very much. Shut your mouth. And please, please, please go do something dangerous. Without a helmet. You know? I, I would just like to say, it, it, with all sincerity, with all sincerity, fuck your face. Fuck your face, bro. I might stay here. 
What if I just stayed here and just like clowned on all these dumbasses all day? All day. Because there's no shortage of you motherfuckers out there. That's the truth. That's the scary part. You know? Oh, shit. Dangerously close to cancellation territory here. I hope that clip shows up somewhere. Where, like, look at how this white guy responded to this. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, please fuck yourself. Please, please go fuck yourself. Because that's how, like, by the way, that's how most people of all races feel about your dumb ass when you make dumb ass comments like that. Like, for real, for real. Like, that's some dumb ass shit, bro. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. All right, anyways, on that very positive note, I just want to say again to everybody, you know, happy Valentine's Day. So much love in the air. Can you feel the love? In the air here at Nerdventures Tower? Oh, shit. So much love tonight. Uh, so much love to you all. And uh, I, I, I hope you guys... Have, okay, Boba, last thing, last thing, last thing I'll say. Last thing I'll say. I'm sorry I got so distracted. I usually don't feed the trolls, but uh, a couple of them uh, really pissing me off this morning. Okay. Here we go. Last thing I'll say about Boba. This is actually pretty important, and I'll, t I'll touch more on this tonight on Nerd Theory. Um, so, you know, Boba's kind of, it's kind of an interesting thing, man. Here's what I really want to say. I feel like saying I really appreciated the book of Boba Fett. And while it's not a great show, I'm still really glad it exists. And so, just like many things and many shows and things that we, we've been through this before, you know, many of you guys that, that have been, you know, with the channel, with the brand for a long, long time, many of you guys already know about this, you feel about this. Uh, I was critical of the finale. I was critical of the show overall. And that may have left the impression that I was like, yo, fuck Book of Boba Fett, fuck Star Wars, oh, Disney shit, mm -mm. Kenobi, I don't know about that shit, you know? And I didn't want to give that impression. I'm actually incredibly grateful for the Book of Boba Fett, for the episodes five and six, specifically the expansion of the Filoni verse, the canon, where we're going with all this shit. Bro, I'm hyped. I'm here for it. The fact that the show was, you know, not that great doesn't affect my anticipation and excitement for a lot of Star Wars things coming. So, for the Star Wars fans out there, I just felt like, okay, so we spent like six, seven weeks getting super hyped up about Boba, and then basically it happens, I make a video where I'm like, yeah, it was all right, it wasn't that great, and then I get out of there, and I felt like, oh man, that's a bad way to leave the conversation with the Star Wars fans, because that's not it, that's not the totality, that's not the complete picture of how I feel, and so I just wanted to say that. I appreciate, I appreciate the book of Boba Fett. I'm grateful that John and Dave uh, and Robert made this show. So I just kind of wanted to leave it there. Okay. Cool, cool. All right, everybody. Much love. I will see many of you Nerdvengers at 1 p.m. We'll do the Nerdvengers stream. I've got to just get into the videos, though, so it'll be a short stream today. Um, lots to do, lots to get on. Much love to you all. Even you buttholy, wiener, pedantic losers. Uh, much love to you guys as well. And uh, as I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you in the next video.
Is everybody gone? Did everybody leave? We got close on that one, bro. Oh, shit. I felt the rage boiling within me. Oh, man. You try to be... You try to be careful, you try to be nuanced, you try to be appreciative, you know, you try to do the work that I think most don't, and yet still these motherfuckers, man, still these motherfuckers. It's just crazy, man, you know? Like, I'm just some dude. But I didn't, like, ass pull my opinions. You know? Anyway. Anyway. I know most of y'all feel where I'm coming from. So that's that's really what it is. And, and, it, and it's not... I don't even want to offend all these other people. But it's, like, it's real shit. Like, they just so don't see... How absurd. And you know what else, really? All right, last thing before. I'm going to literally get canceled. I don't get out of here. It, the, the thing that sucks about what's going on right now, and I think this is why the anti-SJW people get so loud, right? Because, again, I think most of them suck, too. But the reason they get so loud is because so many people speak that bullshit of, like, I can't believe this white guy. Blah, 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 blah. And so many people say that bullshit. And here's the thing. Most people aren't going to step up and say in the public square, yo, that shit's absurd. And they are afraid of the mob. So this is why a lot of the anti-SJW people are so loud about their clowning. Because they feel that real ass people are not just coming out and saying shit about this shit because of they're afraid. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. It's like a real conundrum. A lot of that shit uh, irritates me. So. All right, man. Much love. I'll see you all in the next one.